welcome to the We Talk Health podcast, the official podcast for West Tennessee Healthcare. Please be advised that this podcast is not intended to replace any medical advice. Always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing said in this podcast is intended to supersede or supplement the direction of your medical caretakers. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at we talk health podcast at gmail.com and we will do our best to answer any questions you may have. Welcome to another episode of We Talk Health. My name is Will Cashagro and I am at Sports Plus Dyersburg today with Shelly Surratt, Amy Staggs, and Kathy Sudbury. How are you guys today? Doing great. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on. So Shelly Surratt is an occupational therapist here at Sports Plus Dyersburg. Amy Staggs is a physical therapist here at Sports Plus, and Kathy Sudbury is the marketing manager. Well, today we've traveled down here to Dyersburg. To get started, I want you guys to meet Amy and Shelly. They are pretty much our gurus with our pediatrics, and that's why I wanted to bring them down here today, Will, is to discuss what we do and how we handle the pediatrics in this area and why there is a need for therapy for pediatrics. Great. Amy, you want to start, or Shelly, one of you would like to start to tell exactly what maybe your day-to-day basis with your children may be like and why we need occupational speech and physical therapy for these people. Our pediatric program is the only one in this area. The closest one to us is Jackson, which is another one of our facilities. So we service children from Dyer County, Lake County, O'Brien County, Lauderdale County, all the areas around us. We're the only multidisciplinary program offering occupational, physical, and speech therapy. We're very blessed to have a large staff. It's an interdisciplinary approach, a teamwork approach, and we're a family. So when you say interdisciplinary, you're talking about having all the services available for them. How does a parent recognize that their child may need help? And at what age does this start? We offer services shortly after birth. We see many children that have been in the neonatal intensive care units, uh, whether that be at Jackson Madison County General Hospital or another regional facility. So they may already come into the world with some difficulties or some problems or some delays. So those children may come out of the neonatal intensive care unit with a referral and we'll start their services. We go up till 18 years old, so we service a wide age range. Many of the children we see, the way they come to us is they're going to their pediatrician or their nurse practitioner for their normal checkups and their normal healthcare visits. And the doctor or the nurse may notice something that's concerning or a parent can always say, you know, my other child didn't do this at this age. They seem behind, we're not doing the things the siblings did, or, or if they're not doing something that their friend did at that age. And so they may express concerns, and then that healthcare provider may refer them for either physical therapy, occupational therapy, or speech, or all three at times, depending on the diagnosis of the child. Do the patients need a referral from their pediatric doctor? We encourage it with pediatrics. We definitely encourage you to have a referral because we're going to continue to communicate with them because we may need other testing and we may need other things so we really you know find that a team approach works best with pediatrics because we definitely want them going back in and seeing their primary care physician we want them going back to them you know because it's so important what is some of the main diagnosis that you guys see coming in i know there's a wide variety of it but on the Occupational side, what what is it that you may come in contact with? We have a lot of orthopedic children, too, that come in. I wanted to put that out there as well because sometimes that's forgotten. Our primary diagnosis that we see are neurologically based children, whether they have autism spectrum disorder or they have Down syndrome. Even in a small area, we have a lot of very rare genetic disorders of children who come here who present with developmental delays. Along with that, there are children who are just behind and they come in with just a general like a developmental delay diagnosis. Um, They're just not meeting those fine motor skills, those gross motor skills, their speech and language is behind, and then we get a referral with just a general developmental delay diagnosis. Okay, that, that was my next question is what do you mean when you say a delay? Give an example as for our general public listening in layman term, what what might that be? Well, for physical therapy, like what we're looking at is we're looking at gross motor milestones. And everybody says uh, walking, for instance. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's just, you know, oh, my baby should walk at, at 12 months. 
Yes, that is the goal. But what we're looking at, so 12 months is the, is usually the marker that we use. But as physical therapists, when we do this evaluation, we look at many, many other things. So just because they're not walking at 12 months, so we may give them up to 14 months. But if you have a child that's 15, 16 months, we're not pulling up, we're not standing, we're not taking some steps, that's concerning. So the pediatrician or the parent or somebody's going to say, you know, why are we still not walking? And they're going to they're going to send them on in for a referral. The other thing is something as simple, you know, is not sitting up and things like that. Where we also see is when kids go for that kindergarten physical. There is a huge checklist that they'll go through when they go through that kindergarten physical, and they may not be meeting some of those other gross motor milestones, standing on one foot. How long can they do that? There are just some basic check items that they look at, and they may pick up something that, you know, a parent may not have noticed. Well, um, I know you guys aren't the speech therapist, but you work hand in hand. Same thing, they go through that checklist, and they're having problem speech, is that's when it could be recognized as well. But also, when do you start looking like in the infant side? up to two years? Is there a range that the pediatrics are looking at? There's also a developmental milestone chart that most pediatricians and nurse practitioners use. We look at even the things as such as their reflexes that you're born with. Sometimes children don't integrate those reflexes and that inhibits the development of the use of their hands and their ability to roll and sit up. And so those are the things that we're checking and looking for in that infant range. And as far as with occupational therapy, I'm looking more of simple things like how they're using their hands, opening and closing their hands in that infantile stage, bringing their hands to midline, things that we check off to make sure there aren't any other neurological components going on when they come to us. And with speech, you know, we're going to notice things in a physical therapy or occupational therapy session, you know, you ask prior to that talking. One of the big things is, are they doing what we call oral exploration, where they're, are they putting their hands in their mouth? Are they putting toys in their mouth? Because babies put things in their mouth, and that's how they learn. And we're looking at how, you know, I always ask, how are we doing with the bottle? How are we doing with our foods? Or how are we doing with our baby food? You know, and we're looking at those oral motor skills, how they chew, how they suck. And if we notice anything, then we're immediately going to go back and say, you know, we really do think we need a speech evaluation. And it's not just for speech. Lots of times it's for feeding or swallowing. And lots of our autistic population is going to have texture issues with food. So they may just be very limited, uh, what we call a picky eater, but they're picky eaters that are only eating one to two foods. And that's a problem from a nutrition standpoint for their growth and development. So we're definitely going to have them, you know, get that referral for speech and, and see what we can do to address those issues. And from what I understand, <clears throat> you just made me think of something. So if they're having that texture, the speech therapist is able to help them figure out more foods this way and work with that texture issue or the swallowing issue? There are definitely different feeding approaches. With the sensory aspect, we all go hand in hand. Occupational therapists have a lot of training with what are called sensory processing and sen sensory integration disorders. Um, so we work on all of that sensory exploration, getting these kids organized, getting them to explore. With the speech therapist, they come in with the oral exploration, whereas we're going to, as OTs, we'll focus more on the tactile exploration with the foods. And then, of course, if there's a swallowing component, the speech therapist is the guru on that. They always get that referral. But there are so many sensory things that we all collaborate with because it's a whole body system. As a parent that may be listening to our podcast today, and they get that little diagnosis from the doctor that their baby's not developing the way they should... How do y'all handle those parents? Because I'm sure you see those panicky looks of first you in denial, there's nothing wrong with my child. Or it could be the vice versa. They know it's happening, but they're also maybe embarrassed. So I'm sure you're having to interact as well with a parent to ease their mind. Is that correct? Yes. And it, and it definitely goes both ways. I have parents that come in for that evaluation and they're tearful. They're concerned and they're very worried. And there are children that will come into our services, we'll see for a short amount of time and catch them up. And then they may be fine for a while, and then they may have to come back. And it's just you, your job as a therapist is to just talk about, well, this is what's going on, and educate them. And, you know, we're going to work together as a team, and we're going to get your child to, you know, their maximum ability. We're going to do everything we can to promote that. The other thing is, you know, it's all about education as far as easing that stress and that burden. I think it's so terrifying times. And then there are other people that really don't realize that the, the delay is there, you know, where they just, you know, a parent may be young 
and this is their first child, and they don't know what a child is supposed to do at a certain age. So we provide handouts and additional information and saying, okay, this is what we're looking for at the different ages. We have a parent handout that we specifically use that kind of gives gross motor, fine motor, and oral motor milestones all the way through age six. It's very handy. As a new mom many years ago, (laughs) I would look ahead and kind of see what my child, what, what should we be doing? And even as a physical therapist, I was like, okay, you know, this is what we should be doing at that, that, at that age. I think just having that bond with your family and being reassuring and, and being there for them when they're scared and it's difficult at times, you know, but just, you have to build that relationship. I think that's the great thing about being here. We have such a team approach and these families are like our families. And so we have, uh, Shelly and I specifically, we've seen some kids over 10 years, you know, that have a long-term problem and you really become part of their family. As Amy has said that Sports Plus is one of those dynamics of working with the families. We have great teams here. One of the things I do want y'all to touch base on is we have aquatics here. Most people don't realize that Dyersburg has a pool and you guys are able to use that with the pediatrics, correct? Yes. And there are several patients that Amy and I will do a co-treatment session in the pool together, especially with our children who don't have as much mobility. You need hands-on for safety. You need two therapists in there um, to make sure they're getting the maximum functionality in the pool. So we have several children that we're actually in the pool one whole afternoon almost co-treating patients together so that we can work on collaborative goals and then they get the most out of their aquatic time here. And we both have also been to additional training with aquatics to try to get a certification with some courses that have been offered to us over the years. And what a lot of people don't realize, when you're in the water, it takes pressure off the joints. So it makes it so much easier for that patient that maybe have some mobility issues. And that is making it easier on them. Is that correct? Yes. I think the other thing is we are very specific about the temperature of the pool. Yes. <laughs> um, so we keep the temperature within a very specific range because we have many children that have a lot of muscle tightness and that and a lot of increased muscle tone, for instance, with that cerebral palsy diagnosis. So when you're in that water and it's the, the warmth helps promote relaxation, which allows us to move then, then allows them to move without us assisting them, which is huh. a huge thing. And the children really do love because they have a new freedom that they just don't have on land. I think that's something that the normal person wouldn't know. Something as what you might think as small as a temperature of the pool really could make a big difference in the care of a child or it's, an adult. It's interesting. It's funny that, you know, I have a child that I've been seeing for a long time and we have to really protect her joints. So we're in the pool almost every week together and she can tell if the temperature of the pool is off by a degree or two. She wow. and I both as soon as we get in. <laughs> and so it's a funny thing. And we had been in earlier this week. She said, it's a little cooler than last week, Miss Amy. I said, it is. <laughs> wow. So it, it's a great thing. Water yeah, is a great thing. It's not just for adults. It's for our pediatrics as well. That's really cool. Now, what if you have someone that has come in and needs fitted for some type of equipment? Are we able to do this here? Yes, and we both specialize in different areas of that equipment. For instance, if a child needs hand splints or they need equipment for the bathroom, like a shower chair, a toileting system. I'm, as the occupational therapist, going to be the person that they go to on that. Um, if they need to be fitted for a wheelchair, an adaptive stroller, um, if they need lower extremity orthotics or braces, Amy is going to be the one as the physical therapist who's the go-to. But we both, most of those children are children that we both have. So we collaborate with the family and with our durable medical equipment providers to see what the best options are for those children. So you're not only just doing your regular job as an occupational therapist and a physical therapist and speech, you're looking outside the box uh, and making sure the family has what they need for their, their, their child, correct? Yes. And that's what a lot of people don't realize is that there's more to being a therapist. You're looking at the entire environment, their family, and the specific needs. And not just at home, at school. That's mm-hmm. a huge component. So we're dealing with our school age children and we look at how they can be functional in the classroom and mm-hmm. optimize that function in the classroom, whether that we're looking at their wheelchair seating to make sure that we can position their heads so that they can see their teacher. Something as simple and basic as that. And we coordinate with the school staff 
and as well as the therapist at school because they may come to us and say hey can you work with this family I need this and so we're working with those school therapists as well to try to provide them with the best learning environment so that they can do things at school and they can do them independently. See Will this is why we love this department because they go beyond just their normal call of duty. Props to you guys that's amazing. (laughs) Thank you. Ladies, is there anything else you'd like to touch base on before we end our podcast today that you would like the public to know what you do, anything extra? I mean, we already know you do a lot of extra, but <laughs> did we touch base on every, you know, your daily aspects here? I think the thing about it is pediatric therapy looks very different than traditional therapy that everybody sees when they, or if you've had a family member go through, it looks like play. We have a lot of fun. So we try to make it look as much like play and fun for the children so that they want to come to therapy. And I always tell the parents, I said, you're going to think I'm just sitting in the floor playing with them at first and we'll work through some of those goals. But we try really hard to provide an environment that the kids love to come to and play, have fun. For sure. So if you're out there listening in West Tennessee or anywhere else and are looking for a great team of pediatrics, we have it right here at Sports Plus Dyersburg. Is there a number that they can call? It's um, the phone number is 731-286-1115. And then the fax number is 731-286-0998. So if you guys need anything, just give us a call. I will also put in the description of this podcast a link to their page on the West Tennessee Healthcare website. Phone numbers should also be on that page as well. You guys are making Dyersburg a better place. Thank you for what you do. And this has been another episode of We Talk Health. We have 14 convenient locations to serve you. So if you're experiencing any type of pain or if you just have a simple question, you'd like to give us a call, you can call us at 800-427-0957. We have five in Madison County. That would be our Sports Plus North, South, our Sports Plus Aqua Therapies, Lift Therapy, and work plus rehab. Uh, yes, lift therapy is part of our sports plus, so keep that in mind as well. If you also are living outside of the Jackson area, we have sports plus Alamo, Brownsville, Dyersburg, Henderson, Humboldt, Lexington, Medina, Milan, and Trenton. So if you are living in West Tennessee, we have 14 convenient locations for you. 